Blog. Hey there, this is Tim from Twice Circles and welcome to episode 9 of the official Big Pharma video blog. So if you've been watching my Twitter today then you will know that today is slightly different to the last few episodes. It's more of a kind of design discussion vlog um, as opposed to a gameplay one and the main reason for that is I haven't really added a whole load of new gameplay mechanics since the last one. Um, the last one was just before I took the game to rest, and at that point, just before a show, really it's all about polishing up and kind of making the game as playable as possible so people can enjoy it. Um, so I've been doing things like I've added a new tutorial um, system, which I'll, I'll probably show you a little bit in case you're interested at the beginning of this video. Um, and I've improved how the belt tool works um, and little kind of quality of life improvements like that. Oh, I've completely renegated, renegated? <laughs> renovated the, uh, the drug GUIs. So I'll show you that too. I think they look a lot better now. And actually, God, look at this. This is a new menu. Uh, you may have seen this if you've been watching my Twitter, but otherwise this is new to you. Um, yeah, I redesigned the menu. I, I, partly this is about usability. I like having the central menu because... Um, uh, it, because it allows you to replace that that kind of central column of buttons with a dialog or another column of buttons um, and it makes the navigation a bit simpler whereas when you had tabs up the side like you will have seen in every video uh, previous to this one you you have this kind of two things going on you've got the dialog in the middle and you've also got the tabs and you have to handle every single like edge case like what if they're like really deep into a load of menus and then they click one of these ones can it kind of tidy up after itself neatly whereas with this there's always kind of only really one way of getting out of a dialog it's either the little cross in the top right to cancel or kind of an okay slash confirm uh button in in, in the bottom right corner um, anyway, there we go. I'm already getting into, into the de design discussion. Um, yeah, so I think I will just kick things off now. Um, that's basically what this vlog's all about. So yeah, go on. The first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll show you some of the new menu. Um, uh, let's go to the options page. So this is kind of a little bit neater now. There's still nothing in gameplay or controls, but we do now have a nice resolution thing. You can change full screen. You can change all. Look at these lovely resolutions. All the way up to 2560 by 1440. Um, someone actually tweeted me about that just uh, like last week or something um, so yeah it will look nice all the way up to that resolution um, and then we've got audio sliders oh look at this audio sliders which I will be showcasing in game later uh, to show you some of the music that we now have um, I'm not sure if there's music running in the background there actually probably should be but maybe it's so quiet you can't hear it when we get into a game I will actually um, I will pu uh, pull up that music slider and you can check out some of the music that our wonderful composer has been making. Um, so yeah, that's the new menu. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that's so weird, that's just set the music going. Um, that, that should have been playing anyway. So there's a little bit of title menu music in the background, but I'll, I'll show you some more when I've actually got some fun gameplay to actually show you. So one of the other things I mentioned was a tutorial. I'm going to quickly show you that because it's a bit of fun. Would you like to enable the tutorial? Yes, so I made this because, um, I'm, you know what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take that music volume down a little bit. Um, so the reason I wanted to put a tutorial in is obviously I was taking this game to rest and um, in the, um, at EGX in September last year I actually had to rely on like a leaflet to... Uh, inform the player how to play and that really isn't ideal you know um, partly that the, the problem of doing that is that you're not getting any fee feedback on that leaflet well you can get feedback on the leaflet but it's not very useful feedback because it's not going to be how you're going to teach players to play in the final game so th what I really wanted to do was make a first draft of a tutorial for rest so that I could get some feedback and what was brilliant was actually even over the three days I was there um, I actually kind of updated the tutorial a couple of times and improved it um, and I'll, I'll talk you through, the, through those changes actually when we see them but for now I think I'll just start doing stuff oh another little cool thing look we've got green tiles I fancy the change so I made the default color green um, I think at the moment you can paint things yellow you can't even paint things green <laughs> but they're green tiles uh, this this paint tab is going to be expanded it's going to be like you know full of, of different stuff um, but I just haven't got around to doing it yet so this is Leonard. He teaches you how to how to uh, play the game. Um, what I went for in the end was this kind of um, 
this little window which you can dock out of the way and then you can bring it up and then you can um, put it wherever you want to and it actually goes in front of any GUI so um, I'd like an example let me just build an evaporator if I select that this kind of goes in front of any other GUI so like it's um, you can kind of position it wherever you want and um, sometimes you might want something in the bottom right of the corner of the screen so I thought instead of making a clever kind of thing which automatically moves the tutorial window depending on where your mouse is or wh what you're interacting with at the time I thought you know what let's just give the power to the player there's a reason why Windows has these little things at the top which let you drag them around uh, it's because it's actually a pretty good design oh my god did I just complicate complicate did I just compliment Windows during a, uh, a vlog that's embarrassing um, I'm gonna be complaining about them later actually so that's okay um, I'll remind you when I do. So um, this is Leonard. Let's. Um, he says next, and he first he teaches you how to scroll around the game, but I already know how to do that. And then he teaches you how to zoom in and zoom out, which is pretty fun. And then um, he tells you to go to the ingredients tab. So the style of tutorial that I've gone for is it's one which it, it, it knows what you're doing and it will only progress when you do what it says, but it doesn't lock you out of other game actions. And that's the style that I like. I've been playing Anno 2070 recently. I've only played the first two missions. But what I find a bit annoying about it is it's very kind of... Um, in fact, no, I guess it's quite a similar system, really. Hmm, that's, that's a kind of breaking my own point I'm trying to make. Where actually you can pretty much do anything you want, I believe. But it, 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 it kind of only progresses when you do the right thing so actually no i guess it's the same system what i don't like is systems which lock you out of actions uh because i just kind of find that frustrating it's also a, like really difficult to um to implement those sorts of systems because you have to keep a real kind of kind of firm iron grip on what the player is doing and i think it's easier to say hey look if you don't want to follow the tutorial don't bother um so anyway he tells you to import this um, and I believe, yeah, you can't actually import it here. Here's one time where I actually made it so you did have to import it here because I thought it'd just ruin the tutorial if you if you if you didn't. So you have to click there. Um, and he tells me you need to change it into a pill. You know, I've just remembered what I didn't like about the Anno one. The thing I don't like about the Anno one is that it's just um, it's just full of kind of take this ship here, pick up this, go over here, and it, it, it's not enough actual kind of city building, which is what Anno is really all about. Um, so that's that's what I got annoyed about with the Anno tutorial. So it's something quite different. Uh, let me just get rid of this evaporator. Oh, that's new maybe. Did you know that you can, I can't remember if I had this in my last video blog, you can now drag uh, machines around, which I've been wanting to put in for ages. I'm just going to show you that again. I'm jumping around all over the place with this vlog, but <laughs> who cares? Oh, uh, So look, if you just drag, you can pick up things and drop them again. Um, and that's, that's free. You'll notice my money's not changing. But if you pick it up and then kind of Drake, okay, go here, and if you kind of click on something else, so you kind of deselect it, it basically automatically sells it. Did you see that little little thing here? Um, so you kind of um, when it, it, it basically it kind of sits inside your cursor, if you like. Uh, but as soon as it's outside of your cursor, if you haven't dropped it again, then you just automatically sell it, which I think is quite a neat solution to the whole uh, drag and drop system. Um, okay, so it's telling us to build a pill maker here, so we do that. And then it's telling us to build a load of belts. Now, one of the thing bits of feedback I got from Rest was, um, well, one was to make these ghosts much, much more obvious that they're ghosts and they're not just um, belts. Because in the original version, they were just kind of greyed out belts and they looked a lot like real belts. So now they flash and they're purple, which is cool. The other thing was to try and make the um, the, the drag and drop tool for the belt a bit more... Um, a bit cleverer basically so um, what you see here is I'm dragging over here and I'm, I am going to end over here this is that's pretty similar to kind of the normal drag that we've had for a long time um, but the difference now actually is if I drag between the, these two squares it detects that where the input and the output of that kind of drag is and it literally as long as you're in those two squares it just won't let you do it wrong whereas what it had before is if you wanted to you could actually kind of drag over here and it would kind of turn a, a left corner here instead of going straight so I've just made that not happen anymore because it's obvious what you want to do in this occasion the other one I've done is on a single button click it's the same so you'll notice when you're on a normal square it depends where your mouse is in the square where it's going to draw that belt 
But now, because you're basically, there's only one possible thing you're trying to do in this circumstance, which is go straight into that pill maker. It just does it for you. Um, so it just means that for most of the time when you're dragging around, stuff should just kind of work and it shouldn't need too much micromanagement. I still want to have the micro control because I think there's something satisfying about kind of dropping down your your belts exactly how you want to, but it is more fiddly. Um, so I think that's kind of a nice combination. Um, so it's telling us to make this first drug, which is a pill printer, and then you name it. Um, oh god, I've not, I've kind of, I'm a little bit behind on our tutorial. Um, and once you make your first drug, it gets. Um, it says, oh dear, we're getting some bad reports back about your new drug. It appears to be calling some side, causing some side effects. So it takes us to the company tab. Um, and basically, we've got this uh, induces nightmare side effect, which we need to get rid of. Um, now, it has just occurred to me that I've been going, off about, going on about all sorts of things, and I have not even mentioned the brand new drug GUIs that we have. So, you know, veterans of this video blog series will be thinking, Tim, what the hell? What are the hell? What the hell are these things? They're in columns now. They're not in little squares in corners. Um, so yeah, I've changed it so that now you can see the not only the current concentration that your drug is at at a glance, which you always could see, but you can actually see the concentrations um, that the effects within that drug are active at a glance. So you used to have to hover over each individual effect to see when, at which concentrations they were active. And now you have this kind of little bar here. So it tells me that the active concentration range is 3 to 12. And you can see at 12, we're, we're hitting that. In fact, here, 12 to 20, we're hitting that too. And so both of these are active. In a moment, you'll see what happens when they go deactivated. And basically, they kind of go dark and a little bit transparent. Now, another change I've made at the same time, and I wanted to do this for such a long time, was I wanted to make the concentration... Um, integer and kind of finite um, before we had this thing where you had zero to what, one to a hundred percent which is weird because you had these kind of wonky percentages every now and again where if you used an autoclave and divided the concentration by two then if you had a four uh, let me think a 65 percent uh, drug concentration then that would halve to um, did I say that word half 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 that would half to um, 32 and a half percent and uh, that's just a weird wonky percentage and what I wanted is these nice big numbers well little numbers but with no decimals which are really easy to get a feel for so now it just goes between 1 and 20 and you can't you can't have a, uh, a, a kind of 7.5 concentration um, in the half I can't remember when you half it I think it always rounds down or rounds up I can't remember exactly it's one or the other but it's consistent um, what was I, what, what, there was another point I wanted to make about that. Oh, and the great thing about this is now your evaporators and your dissolvers now change by just 1 instead of 5%. So what I've done is I've removed a, a little calculation that you're having to do every single time you're thinking about a, uh, a reaction, an upgrade reaction, which was you'd have to say, okay, this is going to, I need to get this to 50% concentration. We're currently at 20 the difference between that is 30. That's that's easy. That's just a subtraction. The annoying extra calculation I wanted to remove was, what is 30 divided by 5? That's 6. So I need 6 evaporators, or I need 1 agglomerator and 2 evaporators. And that was an annoying calculation you had to do. Now, I need it's it, the equivalent to that would be, we're currently at 4. We need to get to... Um, Wait, is that right? Yeah, we're currently at four. We need to get to ten concentration. That's a difference of six. So we either need six evaporators or um, two agglomerators. I've actually changed. When I put this change in, the final thing I've done is... I'll just show you this now. Um, is agglomerators and ionizers only change the concentration by three, whereas before they would change it by 20%, which is actually the equivalent of four because it's, it's you know, these used to change it by 5%, and then these used to change it by 20 so that'd be four times as much. That's massively reduced the value of the agglomerator and the ionizer, and I think that's good, because, to be honest, they were way too powerful before. They were cheap, they were quick, they changed it by, by, by 4. It actually makes the autoclave and cryogenic condenser much more... Um, like useful because actually halving your concentration that that's a maximum of a change of 10 um, same with the doubling um, obviously it depends on what the current concentration is how effective that will be but it, it means that it's it's 
it only needs maybe a difference of four before the autoclave and cryogenic condenser are kind of more efficient than maybe a difference of five than the agglomeration ionizer in terms of process cost. Um, they'll always have a disadvantage in terms of process time though, so that's something you'll have to kind of bear in mind. But I, I, what I wanted was because these are more awkward, they should it should be possible to be a higher efficiency if you can be bothered to make the awkward machines work. Um, we might be able to see an example of that in a bit. For now, I'm just going to finish this tutorial. So, uh, Leonard says, I see what the problem is. Your new drug has an active induces nightmares effect. We will need to redesign our production line. Um, and then he tells us to go to the production tab, because what we need to do is, if we move this down to 11, then that will deactivate the induces nightmare side effect. So, we're going to, he's telling us to build a dissolver, and then delete these two lines, build those back in. And while we watch this go through, I'm going to crank up the music and ask you guys what you think. Um, so yeah, what do you think of the music? Uh, leave a comment if you'd like to. Uh, what we were going for is something kind of quite light, quite fun, uh, with a bit of a kind of beat to it because it kind of matches the kind of production line, you know, the beat of the production line, if you like. You know, everything's very kind of... Everything in Big Pharma kind of goes on on this very fixed tick, basically attached to the days going by, which is once every three seconds. Um, and, and we kind of wanted something with a kind of beat going all the way through it, which kind of replicated that. Uh, but at the same time, we just wanted it to be kind of fun and light. And, you know, everything about this game is bright and fun and cartoony. And it's, you know, it's meant to just be a nice place to be, um, you know, even though you're kind of potentially extorting people for money, um, <laughs> holding their lives to ransom because you have that life-saving drug that they need. Um, let's just forget about that. Um, Eureka again! You have improved your drug by getting rid of that nasty side effect. From here, you're on your own, but I'll be here with a few hints on each tab if you need my help. Um, and then basically he gives you a few hints depending on which tab you're in. This is still a little bit hands-off. I mean, you guys watching this video will probably be able to play absolutely fine now on your own because you've been watching me play. But um, people at the show needed a little bit more of a pointer, so I think what would be good is after this is actually having some... Uh, some structured objectives that are kind of set instead of the randomly generated ones that we'll have eventually well you, you, that they'll be um, have some more kind of structured ones to start and they'll be designed so that they're possible to do next so it would be things like why don't you make a cough uh, pill and then why don't you research the agglomerator and upgrade it into an eases asthma drug you know um, and I think that will kind of give give people a little bit more of an idea for um, what to do next after that kind of initial tutorial. Um, the next thing I'd like to show you is the cures tab. So this is new. So there's actually loads of new stuff to show you. It's just all very graphical and it's not really kind of gameplay related. Uh, so there's actually, yeah, I kind of didn't realize how much I had to show you guys, to be honest. So here's the new cures tab. It's no longer left to right. It's now top to bottom. Why? Um, why? That's a good question, Tim. Um, basically, uh, it was too. It wasn't clear enough before what the actual upgrade box was referring to. Like, was it saying how to upgrade the cu the cure that it was attached to, or was it saying how to get to the cure that it was attached to? So what we have now is it sits between the two cures, so it's much more obvious. Um, and that was one of the reasons I wanted to do it. Um, and then, I, to be honest, yeah, that was it. It would have gone out like this. Yeah. I don't know. Um, oh, that was it. Yeah, and I also I wanted these little things to look more like these. You'll see they look almost identical. Um, so, 
um, I kind of wanted that to make a connection in the player's mind. When you see these things, you go, oh, right, that's the same things that I've got inside my drugs, uh, just without the concentration shown, because it kind of just looks a bit neater. Um, and another change is this used to show every single cure that was available in the game, but now, um, no, no, sorry, it was when you got access to a new cure, a new ingredient, it would show you the entire tree for that ingredient, the entire upgrade tree. But now it um, only shows the cures that you can kind of access right now. So it always shows the level one um, ingredients because, um, well, I'll go into detail about that in a moment. It's all kind of tied to each other. Each other. Um, but now you, only, you see basically the next level uh, uh, cure when you have access to the, the thing that can turn into it. So generally speaking, kind of the things that you can see are things that you can get access to in a kind of next, in the next kind of step. There's no point of showing the next level because it's kind of just too far away. I also wanted to create an element of kind of exploration. You know those kind of alchemy games where you kind of mix random things together and then things pop out, like mix fire and water and it makes steam. Um, I wanted an element of that. Um, but it's, it's, there's only a certain extent you can kind of do that with this game. I didn't want you to be at a disadvantage um, if you hadn't looked up all this information on the wiki. Because obviously you're going to... This is a fixed cure tree, so it's all going to be on a wiki somewhere eventually. Um, but I wanted, if you didn't really want to play with every, seeing everything, if you wanted a more kind of like exploratory game where you're kind of, oh, there's a new thing I can make, there's a new thing I can make, then you can play like that. Um, but... That was it. Yeah, that was what I was thinking. There, for a while, I was considering whether you actually had to research the next. You actually had to research the cures themselves, and I think some people have suggested this to me on the blog and and um, the YouTube comments and stuff. I've decided against it because it's this thing where I don't want players who have access to the wiki to kind of be at a huge advantage uh, because it, it. I don't know. It's kind of. I just think it's annoying. So so it's kind of free to know what comes next, uh, and you, you're basically told what comes next as soon as you're able to make it. So as soon as you, for example, if we uh, found this um, ingredient here, why don't we, why don't we start? Um, and then that turns out to be a release hypertension. As soon as you have access to the release hypertension effect, it will show you what's next to make. So it tells you a, a, kind of on a need to know basis. Anyway. So yeah, this is new. I think it's a lot clearer. I don't know. I've got also this. I've changed the um, the text here. It used to just have pluses between these th various things that you needed: concentration, catalyst, and machine. It wasn't clear uh, which order you had to get these things in. So I'm now making it really obvious. I say pre-requirements. So that's what concentration you need to be at first, and then it's upgrade with the. Uh, whichever machine it is. So it's very much kind of you use the machine once you've already satisfied the requirements on the left. I can't remember, is it the same for these? No, I actually haven't upgraded the... I haven't um, <laughs> upgraded. I haven't updated these tooltips. They should be the same. But, um, right. Anyway, what's next on my list? Um, I guess I should actually start kind of playing the game. I'm wondering whether to carry on playing this game or to start a new one. I think we'll just carry on playing this game. Um, all right, let's make some cough medicine. You see, if this is a really bad design, stupid tutorial. I've got this little thing here stuck there. Um, <laughs> that's so rubbish. I'll show you the drag mechanic. Um, you can't drag um, belts. Because I think it's too fiddly. Um, and, you know, I think you can actually argue that it's, you know, that belts are kind of installed into the kind of floor and, and you know, you wouldn't, you know, they're kind of infrastructure as opposed to kind of the, the, the machines, which are kind of, you know, they're on these little stilts, you can kind of move them. I mean, that's a pretty weak argument, but hey. Okay, so that's the first thing. Let's get that actually operating at peak efficiency. Um, next, let's try and make some cough medicine. And you know what? I know we're going to need the agglomerator, so I'm going to hire a couple of researchers, and we're going to get them going on here. I've redesigned the research tree. It's a bit different. Um, I will tell you about it once I've started this other line, because I don't want to make run out of money. So I need to get this up by just one, actually. This is easy. Let's just use an evaporator. 
and a couple of pill printers. Um, so, I originally wrote, oh, whoops. I originally wrote a blog piece about the research tree and I said how I wanted it to be very open. I wanted it to be like this research grid which you could kind of pick your way across in any way you wanted. It, this sounded so good in practice, but in reality it didn't actually play that well. It was weird the fact that your upgrades weren't always directly next to the machines that you wanted to... the machines that led to them. So, for example, it was weird that your evaporator upgrades weren't next to your evaporators, necessarily. Um, yeah, and sometimes you'd have to research a few more things before you could upgrade them, and that felt a bit weird. Um, yep, that's fine. Um, and there was this weird, th oh, it's quite hard to describe, there was this weird thing that would happen which is if you wanted to rush forward because you wanted a certain machine, there was many routes you could take to get to that machine, but um, if you wanted to do it most quickly you'd just take a direct route to it. That's fine, okay? there's nothing wrong with kind of forcing the player to make a decision like that, but what's annoying is actually that direct route would be through some machine that you didn't even need or want. And that was really frustrating as a player. It, it was kind of valid as a game mechanic, but it didn't leave me feeling satisfied. So it gave this illusion of choice, that grid system. But really, if you'd chosen what machine you wanted to go for, there wasn't that much choice about how to get there, unless you wanted to go a really kind of tortuous route. I mean, with a grid, if I want to go from here to here, I can either go bum bum, or I can go dum 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 I mean that's a really long route to take just because you didn't want that thing in the middle so here's my solution what we have now is a a kind of more streamlined grid so it doesn't there's not obviously as much stuff for one thing partly because I stripped out all of the stuff that's not implemented yet this is just machines there's none of the kind of soft um, research topics in because I didn't want to confuse people playing at res um, and the way it's broken up basically is you have you have these basic level, uh, kind of, I don't know how to call them, kind of base technologies called Engineering 1, Engineering 2, Engineering 3, Engineering 4, Engineering 5. And from these, you have your various machines coming off them. Um, and every now and again, you, and ba sorry, basically you kind of, you can take this pretty kind of straight route through the engineerings um, without getting anything off to the sides if you want to. Uh, there's a few things that you kind of have to get. I forced the player to get a moldy mixer because it's super useful and um, it kind of just made laying out the grid a bit easier. But for example, you don't have to get the cream maker. If you want to, you can get the cream maker super quick with this new uh, system. Um, but you, you'd, you'd, you know, you'd, you'd sacrifice obviously being going for some of these kind of more basic technologies. Um, so you go for the multi-mixer and then you can choose either autoclave or cryogenic condenser, then engineering free. You have to get the chromatograph. Again, that was mainly because of um, it, it made the uh, laying out of the grid more easy. I, I'm actually going to take another pass at this, uh, this research tree, which I'll maybe talk fr through later in this video. But um, for now, I'll just talk about what, what I was trying to achieve with this version. Uh, and then here, then you get the ultraviolet cure. You're kind of working your way up the, up the, up the machines. Um, but kind of all of the makers are off to the side. And importantly, all of the upgrades are off to the side. So you have the advanced cryogenic condenser. You have to get the, this one. Um, you have to get the um, normal cryogenic condenser before you can get the advanced. You have to get the autoclave before you can get the uh, advanced autoclave. I guess you could actually go like this, which is funny. I didn't notice that before. Um, and... Here's the thing, this looks perfect. Uh, I'm gonna get a glomerate ionizer too because I always need it, I find. This looks like a much more strict tech tree which allows you lots um, which allows you less choice. But the truth is, um, the the kind of core technologies that it forces you to get, everyone's generally going to want. And actually it lets you choose not to get a lot more than the old version. These engineering technologies, for example, they just always reduce your purchase price of machines by 10%. So there's no reason why you're not going to want that. Whereas before it was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll get the cream maker because it's in the way. Which is just not a very fun choice. I want it to be a very, like, I want you to want to research everything that you have to research. Um, but then again, I still need to gate it to a certain extent because there's no good you just getting the Hadron Glider off the bat. So I hope that makes sense. There's actually another step I want to do which will open it up even more, um, which I will talk about once I have um, made another drug. Shown to be effective, yeah. Oh, 
There's a little bug there. I uh, this is actually the this is actually a slightly older build. Um, I think this is fixed now, um, where I haven't spaced out these um, the brand stories properly. But that's okay because I'm actually in the process of completely redesigning this tab. Oh my god, there's so much to talk about. Every topic just gets me onto another one. Let's let's actually build another factory. Uh, not a factory. Let's build another production line. Oh, that's not very good actually. Oh, I've messed this up a little bit. Uh, okay, let's see if I can fit in another this coughs one here. Oh, we're about to get a new ingredient. Uh, okay, so we need to get up to eight. We're currently at five. So let's use an agglomerator. Mm, I want to keep this real tight. Wait a minute. Is there any point of even doing this? Because um, yeah, okay. What we'll do is we'll. Huh. No, this is a pointless socket to use. I've kind of messed up the design here a bit. Let's just go up here. Um, let's buy that. Let's see if we can make a mega. Whew, okay. What shall we do? I think we'll import here and here. We're just going to make loads and loads of asthma medication. I hope it's got a good value at the moment. 122%. Hell yes, it does. Awesome. Okay, so we'll go here and here. I believe this is right. This should get us up into the right context. This should bring it. Let's just watch it. So that brings it up to 8. Which means that that is now ready to go. And then we put it for another agglomerator. Probably worth getting some. Uh, that's a silly place to build it. Uh... Oh, oh god, I've run out of money. Okay, let's get a loan. Oh, it's the t tutorial, so you start off with zero loan. Hey, hey, hey. Um. Right. So that should upgrade it. Zoom. Look at these sexy new animations. Oh my god, that animation again. Ha oh, ha. Nice. Uh, and then we need to go down one. So this is the nice thing, you don't even have to read the numbers anymore. You can just like see graphically how much you need to change things by. Um, when you click on the drugs. I, I oh my god, I wanted to put in this drug GUI change for such a long time. But um I was trying to get in more mechanics because I was worried about not hitting deadlines. Oh, I feel so good to finally have it looking the way I want it to. Okay, is asthma. Should we keep going down all the way to so it's not got a side effect? You know what? I can't be bothered. Let's just turn it into pills. Actually, we're going to be selling loads of this stuff, so it's probably worth doing. Uh, how much do we have to go down? One, two, three. Ionizer. I haven't got the ionizer yet. <laughs> I think we just got it. Look at that. I'm too good at this game. I love ionizers. They're like by far the most easy to use machine in the world because they've got process time of one and they go straight with this little wobble. Oh, they're wicked. They're a little bit OP, but oh, I don't care. I love them. <laughs> and then we'll just have like this huge bank of like pill printers, I reckon. Oh, look at the industry. Yeah. This is what I want the game to feel like, you know, this kind of like industrial, I mean look at this, you know, this feels quite cool, I mean you've got you, these kind of identical production lines next to each other, I've taken out a huge loan to make this happen, I just, I don't know, this is kind of what I wanted the game, want the game to feel like. Um, so far, it, it's kind of been a little, sometimes I'm playing and I feel like, oh it's a bit too micromanagey, and you don't get enough of this kind of cool kind of business feel. What's going on, why is that, why is it not working? Uh, no, I've, I've got enough money. What? Um, hmm. Is it a bug? That might be a bug. Very strange. Yeah, I think that was a bug. Huh. Except... Oh, you know what it might... No, it can't possibly be that. It can't be to do with the research. This is so weird. 
I've actually not run into a bug for such a long time. It might be to do with the fact that it was ready to move into it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I've got no money again. Jesus. It might be to do with the fact that it was playing its animation before the thing moved in. Because I actually briefly took out the animations, the startup. No, it's still not working. Am I missing something, guys? Like, if this was Twitch, you could tell me. It receives it, and then it won't actually go off. Huh. That's so weird. I've never seen that before. Um, oh wait, no, no, it's still moving. Oh, I'm so confused. Okay, um, I will look into that. Apologies. Let's make a load of dissolvers instead. Maybe we'll have like two different drugs. I wonder if that works. I wonder if there's any actual kind of like business point of doing that. Um, probably not. Shown to be effective. Yeah, better pain meds. Right. This has been running a little bit long actually. God, I think I've been talking for over half an hour already. I've barely done anything. Doesn't time fly? Um, I was going to tell you about something else, wasn't I? Um... Yeah, let me have a little look through my list. Oh god, I was going to answer some questions. You know, I'd better answer these questions, because otherwise I'm going to forget to. Um, and hopefully, by the time I finish answering questions, we might be able to pay off a bit of this loan. Okay, so, sorry if I'm sniffing a bit today, by the way. I've, um, I might be coming down with something, I'm not sure. Okay. So, I asked on Twitter earlier, I said, this is going to be a design discussion. So I was thinking, I'm not going to really have much to say, and it's going to go real short. And then it turns out I've gone for ages chatting on about nonsense uh, but you know I did ask for some questions to answer on film to fill the time and uh, I'd better bloody answer them now so Brecht uh, Gilliot hopefully I've pronounced that right please uh, forgive me if I haven't uh, eases asthma that's, not, that's our bad eases asthma here's our good eases asthma plus and then let's watch the profits roll in Okay, um, so Brecht Gilliot um, asks, are you going to put in a random name generator for the medicine we create? So what you'll see now is um, there's currently a kind of non-random name generator. It, it generates a name that's very much uh, to do with what the drug does. Uh, I think I could probably improve it a little bit. Currently it just kind of says eases asthma too. Maybe it should calculate whether it's got any extra side effects and says easy asthma plus or something like that i don't know um but it's an interesting idea i could possibly put in a completely random name generator which just literally generates names from like a couple of hundred that i come up with um which kind of sound more like brand names so they could p possibly be attached to any drug and then if you want to you could either you know you can either give it the basic default factual name you can give it your own name, or you can use the random names. Yeah, I think it's a pretty cool idea. I would definitely put it in my list of, like, you know, cool stuff to add if I have time. Um, and, you know, I, I certainly like the idea of it. Like, I'm trying to think of some cool names. Uh, Repu... Saw... Flapu... Mon. <laughs> Sounds like a Pokemon. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I put Pew in the beginning, middle of them all. Um, what else? Um, God, it's quite hard to come up with names, isn't it? I can see why you want a random one. Uh, Omnicure. Um, that's a, that, that basically goes for everything, Omnicure. Um, next question. Um, Jeff Ame asks, what's the end game? And how long will it take to get there? Are we going to be playing a few 20-hour games or lots of two-hour ones? I mean, this is a great question. Oh, look, we're making money. Let's pay some loan back. Um... Apologies for the interruption. Um, so, I think this is a really good question. The short answer is the latter. So, probably lots of two-hour games. I've been rethinking over and over what I want to do in terms of victory conditions and objectives in this game. And I've actually, since that blog piece I did, I, my ideas have changed a fair bit more. I'm, I might do another blog piece. I might just chat about it in a vlog if I can find the time, because I keep filling them up with nonsense. Um... 
but basically yeah i like this sh- i quite like like short games because it allows you to iterate over your strategies as a player more more often so i like that feeling where you play a game and you think oh i'll try this strategy and you play for a couple of hours maybe you play the whole thing in one sitting maybe you split it up into three sittings something like that um and then you kind of come to an end game and you you finish and you complete your objectives and then you start again um you know almost roguelike in a, in a way but um you know, I'm thinking kind of almost like the style of FTL in that you kind of start a game and you might be looking to achieve certain objectives. The only problem with, say, FTL is that it's so random that it's, it's difficult to achieve the objectives you're necessarily planning to, to, to achieve. God, these are really good profits. This is really good. We're making loads of money. <laughs> Although it did take a hit when we started selling it. Um, so, so yeah, probably kind of more like the two-hour games. I will briefly talk about my latest thoughts, but don't hold me to them. So my latest thought is forget that victory point idea I came up with. Although, look, I reserve the right to go back to it, but currently I'm thinking, no, let's not do that. What if in the main game mode what you actually had was a um, series of kind of scenarios that you set up with various parameters like you have a kind of a very basic one which has like one stupid ai opponent and then you have a few more where you have like like three or four ai opponents and probably make the simulations getting kind of more difficult as you go along harder to get approval more expensive to patent stuff kind of getting more and more strict and hardcore as you go along these scenarios and in each one you have a series of like objectives uh, victory conditions and you can choose which ones you want to go for in this game so you choose the scenario and then there might be kind of nine different objectives three easy three medium three hard for each of these separate scenarios and then you select up to three of them to go for and you might not get all of them because sometimes they might not synergize if you choose you might choose them to synergize well together and um and the idea is once you achieve it then you know it gets ticked off it goes gold or whatever and you know you've permanently achieved that so there is you know an element of a kind of campaign in there and that you're kind of you know you cumulatively you are achieving these things over multiple games which i think is nice you get that feeling of accomplishment but i still want it to be a very much like pick up and play and just jump into a new game and i want it to be super replayable um so i think that'd be quite nice you'd almost and you almost have these two levels of control you've got the kind of you choose which scenario you fancy playing in and some of them will be kind of more hardcore than others but then you also have what objectives you go into for go for so you might have quite an easy kind of sandbox scenario kind of this stuff kind of the first one you go for but it could still have some pretty difficult objectives to get in there it's just that the competition your ai opponents aren't really going to stop you it's going to be all about you just being like a super efficient machine um, a lot of these kind of victory conditions you'll be able to opt in to select you know they'll be on a timed basis so another thing i've been thinking is I'm not going to go for the whole, like, AI competitors aren't going to compete with you to achieve victory conditions. You're going to be either against the time or it's going to be completely untimed, unlimited time to achieve an objective. Um, because I I kind of think AI competitors, they're not exactly like the player. The fact that they're not, you can't see what they're doing, even though they do actually adhere to all of the rules. Like, I've been making the AI over the last few days. They, they adhere to all the same rules as, as you do, and you'll, you'll see that they, you know, they have to basically build agglomerators and ionize and all this. But because they're not simulated in graphic form, graphical form in front of you, I think it takes away a bit of the bite, and it feels a little bit weird to be kind of playing against them like a real opponent. So instead, the AIs, they're going to be realistically simulated market competitors. That's the way to look at them. They're just part of the simulation. They make your life a little bit more difficult. Um, they, they produce price pressure, stop, you know, forcing prices down because they're also supplying the market with goods. Um, so they're not actually going to be competing um, with you in trying to go for those objectives. Um, and I, I, I just think that kind of will make a more fun game. I've kind of stuck on this question for ages. I haven't fully answered one of what the end game is about. The end game is is, is basically when you get to these kind of uh, whoops, these high level um, machines, and you can use those to reach the best cures. Um, and there'll be certain kind of random object, sorry, random missions that pop up that actually create new cures that that aren't available unless this random thing turns up. I won't give it away, but like you know, certain kind of epidemics might kind of pop up as you play. Um, what's just happened? Um, oh dear, my asthma medication is increasing blood pressure. Um, but yeah, basically, you you'll probably be able to reach those kind of higher higher echelons of machines in a kind of like a couple of hours um, play. I, I li- liken it a lot to kind of the Settlers games, uh, the latest. Well, I think I played Settlers Six, which was um, 
I thought really well done. I thought it had a really nice kind of time scale. Like you, you, you kind of it took time to ramp up through your kind of protect production lines. Uh, your kind of sorry, uh, resource types. But you know, within a couple of hours, you could be getting to those kind of top tier resources, and you kind of do it all again, and you have different strategies each time. What's happening now? After long term use, people think better pain meds are good. Great. Anyway, so that's what kind of end game we're talking about, and that's the sort of length of game we're talking about. Um, I'm going to have to jump on to the next question. So, um, Samuel um, Argento, I'm going to say. I'm going to go for a soft G. I hope you don't mind. It might be Argento. Argento. Uh, asks, um, is it a sandbox game or a campaign mode? Single or multiplayer? Well, what's good is hopefully I've answered a bit of your question about how a campaign might look in Big Pharma when it comes out. Um, it's it won't be kind of a strict leveled campaign, but there will still be things to do and you know objectives to achieve and stuff to to complete. Um, there will always be a sandbox mode, and in fact there will be a custom game mode which lets you set up your sandbox however you want. Do you want AI competitors, or don't you? Do you want easy approval? Do you want to remove approval trials completely? You can. Do you want to get rid of the whole patent mechanic? Untick a box, right? Um, how 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 um, much demand is there going to be for various? How diseased is the world going to be? That will be a slider, you know. Really really high disease, then everything's going to be worth a little bit more. Really really low disease, then um, your cures are going to you're going to be fighting over curing a smaller number of people. So that's kind of how the sandbox game will work. Um, and then have I missed a question? One two three. No, and then um, Matt Bristow asks two questions. Um, what game most excited me at Rest? So it's nothing to do with Big Pharma, and that's absolutely fine. Although I have a bit of a lame answer, it's like the thing about when you go to these shows as a developer and business owner is that you really only have one thing on your mind. You're trying uh, to make sure people are enjoying your game, and you're trying to spot what is stopping people from doing that. And you're also trying to get on as many interviews as possible. And I was actually pretty successful on that latter front, which meant I spent very little time over the first two days at, near my stand at all, because I was in interviews. But the last day, I did manage to um, stay at my stand a bit more. But to be honest, I still didn't get much of a chance to play games. I had a quick go at Mike Biffle's volume, because it was right next door. And, and I wanted to play. It wasn't just because it was right next door. Um, and I enjoyed my time with that. I would like to see a few more levels. Obviously, it was a, a short show demo so uh, there's a limit to how much you're going to be able to see because you know you don't want queues forming but i think it's very neatly designed i think it's it's quite um it feels quite tight um i think it's great the idea it's got a, a fixed camera angle i think a lot of stealth games make the mistake of going over, over the shoulder cam just because it's 3d doesn't mean you have to use over the shoulder cam over the shoulder cam can be a little bit awkward it's difficult to look around corners and uh stuff can kind of get in the way whereas what's what's nice about this is you have kind of this ultimate control and you can really plan your moves i think it's going to play a lot like super meat boy in that it's going to be about memorizing the level and memorizing a set of actions to do one after another um i think it's going to be good um it's not like my favorite type of game as you might expect is kind of those strategy and sim type games uh, and out of those sort of games i'm trying to think i mean i don't think there's really anything that's not out that i'm super amped for um i'll tell you the games i'm really looking forward to it's nothing to do with rest but um i want to try off world trading company i think it looks awesome i think it's the game that i wish i had designed honestly <laughs> i think it's such a sweet idea and i think it's very well designed i think they uh, it, they design has done an excellent job um, if you don't know it's designed well yeah mainly by the, the lead designer from um, Civ 4 so I hope, I hope I've got hope I got that right it might be Civ 5 I think it's Civ 4 um, so yes a lot of design pedigree there for strategy games um, I'm holding off until it's out of beta though because I generally only play games kind of once and I don't really want to ruin it for myself if it's not that good yet it looks good don't get me wrong but I'm gonna hold off a bit because I've got plenty to do and plenty of games to play at the moment. The other game I want to play is Cities Skylines. Um, I'm sure everyone's already playing it, but um, I haven't yet. And uh, when I get a free weekend, I'd love to devote a bit of time to that. I haven't played a SimC game for ages. Uh, in fact, well, I say that. I, <laughs> I tried to boot up SimCity 4 last night, but I couldn't get it running on Windows 8. And boom, I told you I would slag off Windows during this um, 
this vlog and I have. It can't get bloody SimCity 4 to work on Windows. Bloody Microsoft. I hope I have evened the balance of uh, Microsoft fanboyism slash uh, slagging them off. Um, and that is... Oh no, there's one more question from Matt. Thank you for two questions, you greedy bastard. Uh, currently in the game, do you have any pet peeves you haven't dealt with yet? Yes, of course I have. There's so much stuff I'd like to do. Although I've got to admit, it's feeling really nice and tight now. I'm, I'm really... I actually am really liking the game at the moment. But you, you might think I've always thought that. I might have put on said nice things in the past about the game, but like I haven't always been the biggest fan of it, if I'm honest. I've always thought it looked amazing, but I was always I was had this little worry, niggling. Is it going to have that depth that I really want it to have? And you know, it's really starting to feel good. Um, there is loads of stuff I'd still like to do. Um, I want to completely renovate the research tab. I want upgrades to be part of the same box as the upgrade itself. Someone actually suggested this to me on YouTube. I can't remember their name, but you know, full credit to you. You know who you are. And the way I think it's going to work is actually your idle researchers will basically fill up a bar and they'll, they'll earn you upgrade points. And then you can assign these upgrade points to your things. Uh, and it will kind of like, they'll, maybe it will almost be like no limit to the amount you can upgrade a certain technology. It will just give you like a cumulative bonus rather than having like lots and lots of boxes doing the same upgrade it wouldn't be an advanced dissolver you just upgrade your existing dissolver and it will keep decreasing the processing uh, sorry um, uh, the process cost um, and some people have complained about the researchers when they're idle they're just wasting you money and I thought this would be kind of two uh, two birds one stone that any idle researchers they're not really idle they're working on upgrades same for um, explorers and testers Oh, I do have a pet peeve. I, I don't like this screen, to be honest. Um, I don't know what it is about it. Um, I find the whole thing about um, assigning explorers a little bit random, but uh, and it doesn't really kind of feel like you're making a very interesting decision. But I have a load of ideas for how to fix that. It's just I haven't had time to do it yet. I think you're actually going to be able to see a preview of the drug. You won't be able to see exactly what's in it, but you'll be able to see which one of these starting cures it is. Um, in the preview and maybe whether it's got a catalyst but not which catalyst it is um, oh there's other things like I'm thinking this is my brother's idea was having like a how how harsh an environment you're going to and basically if it's a harsh environment there's a chance your explorers will die while they're exploring there I think that's a wicked idea because what I think we need is like a you need two values. You need some kind of toss-up when it comes to one of these areas. You need to know what you might get, and then you also need how harsh it's going to be and how long it's going to take. And then you can make some kind of, you know, in informed decision about, like, whether you want to explore there, which currently you don't have. It's just like, well, I'll just go for the next one. So that's a pet peeve, but I, I, I know how to solve it, if you know what I mean. So it's, it's, it's okay. I just need the time to do it. Okay. So, um... I I better stop stop this uh, this vlog because I think it's it's almost an hour now. Um, well, it's it's not quite, but um, thank you for watching. I, I you know it's been a bit of a weird episode. I totally winged it. I I apologise if it's been slapdash, but I I hope it's been interesting. I've talked about so much different stuff. I'm working on the AI at the moment. That's oh, it's my favourite bit. I love designing AI. I I probably will do a blog post soon. Uh, as that there was a request for that on the Twitter, uh, well, you know, half request, and um, I think it would be a fun thing to talk about. Basically, the the, the kind of almost flowchart of decision making the AI is going through. Um, uh, look at this. This is interesting. There's there's a real difference between the good asthma and the bad asthma treatment. Uh, I think mainly because of brand. Yeah, look at this. Jeez, brand value. That's very cool. Um, so yes, AI. Um, but so far the AI is looking really cool. It's like so exciting when uh, like a little little sneak peek. It's not in this version of the game, but in the build I'm currently working on, the AI is actually like going off and building production lines and competing with me. And it's like a really weird feeling. Like this, I'm designing this company tab, so there's redesigning it so that you can see all of the AI's uh, products on there too. It's going to be much more condensed. It's so each product is just going to be a single line, and when you click on a button, to see more details. And it's like really weird watching one of your competitors' products appear on this thing, and it's like, ha! I was making that, you dick. So that's cool. Uh, that's what I'm working on at the moment. Uh, a quick shout out to the Reddit page. There's a subreddit called uh, 
Oh, I can't remember. There's a link on the Big Pharma homepage. And uh, it's not very active at the moment, but I, I feel like there might be a fair number of you who would like to discuss it. And you know, if you want to talk to me, it's better just... E well, don't email me, actually. Just do a comment on the blog post or on the YouTube, and I'll see it, and I'll talk back. And it's nice because it's, it's in public and everyone can see it. But if you want to talk about talk amongst yourselves, I really suggest going on the Reddit, actually, because... Um, it's a, you know well you know all know Reddit. It's a really great forum for sharing ideas, and I will be reading and watching it. But it'd be nice if I wasn't doing all of the talking. You know, it'd be nice if you guys were talking amongst yourselves too. So do check that out. Other than that, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.